Hey team, welcome back to Control Surfaces Support. My name is Eddie Gray and I am that Logic Pro guy. I believe that all Logic Pro users everywhere would all agree that Control Surfaces in general is not covered very well. And when it is covered, it usually is just a bunch of scraps all over the internet and it's usually archaic. This along with the environment in Logic has to be the most frustrating part of the program when you're trying to learn all the ins and outs and this is why I have decided to create these series of videos. So make sure you subscribe as we support you with control surfaces in Logic Pro. The controller assignment window inside of Logic Pro essentially allows us to organize what we call control parameter assignments. So on-screen controls, plug-in parameters, things like that. It has the ability to organize your controllers using zones and modes. But what exactly are zones and modes? Well, if we really look at it, zones are a type of organizational tool to group control parameter assignments together. Instead of having a messy controller assignment window that looks like this, imagine being able to streamline it so it looks more like this. So let's make the most out of your control surfaces. When you first open up the controller assignment window, it shows a default zone called no zone. You can think of this as a main folder of sorts, a catch all that receives all the commands that are not specifically designated to what's called a custom zone. If you create a control parameter assignment, by default, it will be stored here unless you intentionally change its location. So let's go ahead and create a new custom zone by clicking on the plus button here and let's call this MPK mini. If a zone is an organizational tool, then a mode is like a subfolder inside of a zone. So let's go ahead and create a mode called volume so we can use the MPK mini here to control the volume of Logic Pro's mixer. So let's go ahead and assign the on-screen controls within Logic Pro's mixer to the rotary knobs of this controller. So this is an addendum to the video. Notice that these assignments were learned in what's called no mode. I haven't created a custom mode or a category like volume or pan. So just notice that because it's gonna help a lot when you start organizing your own modes. So let's say you used up all of the rotary knobs for volume and you also wanna use the same controller to work with pan, for example. You could just try learning the on-screen controls of the pan pots for the assignments, but then you're going to be learning one assignment on top of another. And this could be a real pain to work with, especially when this message keeps popping up right here. So instead, we're gonna create an additional custom mode that will theoretically separate assignments into different subfolders, allowing us to access these commands when we want them. This will help things from an organizational perspective and will improve workflow. So let's do that now. So here I have a mode that's called volume and that's where I have mapped all of these rotary knobs to the volume channel strip. And so now we'll create another mode and we'll call this pan. So just remember this mode is inside of the MPK mini zone. And so if I click on volume, you'll see all of the parameters in here. If something gets lost for whatever reason, you can actually copy and paste these. So that's a plus, but let's go to pan here. And now I'll learn pan. So notice that I didn't get that irritating message about overlapping assignments. So here I am controlling pan and the reason nothing is blocking it is because our mode is currently looking at the pan valley for the MPK mini. If I switch this over to volume, now we're working with volume. So we have two modes, volume and pan. These are subfolders inside of a custom zone. So these two custom modes, the subfolders of the actual zone, they're gonna act different than what's called the no mode. And so I'm gonna click here to assign a parameter that regardless of which mode is selected, whether it's volume or pan, it's gonna work every single time. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on this plus button right here. 
under class, go to mode change. For mode, go all the way to the bottom and you should see the modes that you created pan volume. So let me click on volume for now. Then you need to tell the controller which message are you going to send. And this is where it gets a little bit tricky because I'm not actually sure how to put this in manually. So this is my workaround. It's not great, but it is what it is. I hit learn mode and I'll click in this case, a note on and off message or a pad. And then I just copy and paste the information. So this is my MIDI controller, the Mio XM HS2. That's what this is connected to. And so then I will essentially delete that message because I don't need it. Go back to what I was trying to do a second ago and then enter that value change. And you could also, again, tell it which MIDI controller you would like for it to look at. And so with that being said, now I have a way to trigger volume and we'll do literally the same exact thing, but we will do it with this button for pan. So I usually just copy and paste this. So command C, command V. I highlight the second one. This time we select pan and then use that same silly hack. So we'll hit command L, find out what that MIDI message is. If somebody has a better way of doing this, please let me know. But this is just uh, how I sorted it out. Volume and here's pan. Let's go ahead and paste that in. All right, and now we have a way to change between volume and pan. So when I click on volume, I can control the mixer. And when I click on pan, now we can utilize the pan pots. All right, team, I hope you enjoyed this video. Just wanted to thank you again for the opportunity. I'm glad that everyone's doing so well. It's such a blessing to be able to work on this program. I love it so much. It gave me a second chance at life. And I have learned so much from so many different people. And I've had the privilege of being able to work with some of the greats in this industry. And so I hope that you benefit from it now. Take it, take it as far as you can. And I will see you on the next video. All right, cheers.